even though Keats had his problems with Wordsworth, there would be no Keats without Wordsworth. And we see that very clearly in one of Keats's most famous letters, um, his letter um, that likens the world to a mansion of many rooms. This is one of many Keats letters that we'll return to again and again. Keats was a master letter writer. This letter, the letter on a negative capability, um, the negative on the letter on the veil of soul making, uh, the letter on uh, Keats Keats's interest in imagination, the idea that what one imagines to be true is true, just as Adam imagined Eve and she became present. So the poet imagines his subject and it becomes present. So many lovely letters from Keats. Um, I would say that. Along with Emily Dickinson, he's one of the few writers whose letters are just as good as his actual uh, poetry. So here's Keats in a letter uh, described likening the world to a um, mansion of many apartments. Well, he writes, and this is um, May of 1818. Well, he writes, I compare human life to a large mansion of many apartments two of which I can only describe, the doors of the rest being as yet shut upon me. The first we step into we call the infant or thoughtless chamber in which we remain as long as we do not think. We remain there a long while and notwithstanding the doors of the second chamber remain wide open, showing a bright appearance, we care not to hasten to it but are at length imperceptibly impelled by the awakening of the thinking principle within us. We no sooner get into the second chamber, which I shall call the chamber of maiden thought, than we become intoxicated with the light and the atmosphere. We see nothing but pleasant wonders and think of delaying there forever in delight. However, among the effects this breathing is father of, is that tremendous one of sharpening one's vision into the heart and nature of man, of convincing one's nerves that the world is full of misery and heartbreak, pain, sickness, oppression, whereby this chamber of maiden thought becomes gradually darkened, and at the same time on all sides of it many doors are set open, but all dark, all leading to dark passages. We see not the balance of good and evil, we're in a mist. We are now in that state. We feel the burden of the mystery. To this point was Wordsworth come, as far as I can conceive when he wrote Tintern Abbey. And it seems to me that his genius is explorative of those dark passages. Now if we live and go on thinking, we too shall explore them. He is a genius and superior to us, insofar as he can, more than we, make discoveries and shed light in them. Here I think Wordsworth is deeper than Milton. <laughs> Passages of, of great praise. Uh, like, likening life to this, this, this journey from innocence to experience, from not thinking at all uh, to thinking in a kind of rudimentary way, in a way that we might liken to innocence. And this rudimentary thinking is, is, is enjoyable, it's ecstatic. But when we are in the room of maiden thought, we soon see other doors opening. And we know that this is not the only room. And we know, if we want to be a great poet, that we have to go into those other rooms. They're dark, they're unmapped, who knows what is in them. Wordsworth in Tintern Abbey says he, he, is, he has experienced the burden of the mystery. So he is a poet who has gone into those dark passages, um, in particular the dark passages, um, passages of the human psyche, human emotions. And this is how Wordsworth differentiated himself from Milton, remember. He says that even though Milton explored the theological fall of man, I'm exploring something much more important and much more challenging, and that is indeed the very makeup of the mind that creates the theology of the fall of man. Well, Keats is here saying, yes, Wordsworth, this is the subject of poetry. And what does that mean for Keats? It means that essential to powerful poetry is mystery, darkness, pain, misery, heartache. Keats is not romanticizing these feelings. He knew them well, as we heard in another lecture. He was orphaned at a fairly young age. He trained as a medical student um, and saw horrific, horrific things in that training. 
Um, he also had to watch his own brother Tom die of tuberculosis, just as his mother did. So Keats is a poet whose starting point in some ways is where Wordsworth sort of pushes to at the end. He wants to go to that darkness where Wordsworth stopped and move forward from it. And this for Keats, not affirmation, not light, not wholeness, not transcendence. This, the embrace of what is messy and complicated um, and painful in the world, this is ultimately what makes for powerful poetry. And bravely, that is where Keats will go.